Salwete omnes. My name is Darius, and welcome to the world that was. Today, I'll be making some Roman bread. Bread is one of humanity's food staples, because if there's a collection of humans, without a doubt they'll find a way to make bread. This particular kind of bread was actually recorded by Apicius, a Roman writer and gourmet, Marcus Gaius Apicius, who was writing in the first century BC. He recorded a simple wheat loaf, so that's what I'm making today, with a little bit of decoration. In any case, let's take a look at the world that was. To begin with, pour your packet of yeast into a large bowl and add a little bit of water just to rehydrate it. Romans wouldn't have had access to dried yeast like this, but they would have used natural airborne yeast, like how we use it today when making sourdough. So you could just as easily use about a half cup of sourdough starter if you want to be more authentic. But since that's something that very few people would have on hand these days, dry yeast would work fine. In any case, whatever kind of yeast you use, toss this in, along with some water, and your teaspoon of salt. On top of this, add about a cup of wholemeal flour, followed by a cup of plain flour. Then pour in a little bit of water, just enough to get it mixing into a cohesive dough. Always add slightly less water than you think you need so your dough doesn't wind up getting too wet. I usually add about a half cup of water at a time and work it through before adding more if I need it. When your dough looks cohesive, get to kneading it in the bowl a little before tossing it out onto a lightly floured work surface. Knead your ball of dough for a while, stretching it out and folding it around repeatedly. You should know you're done kneading your dough whenever you can poke it and it springs back fairly quickly. This is completely dependent on how warm your kitchen is as well as how active your yeast is, which is also dependent on a thousand different factors. You may have to knead this more than I do. In any case, it's now time to form your bread. More often than not, Roman bread was disc-shaped. Examples of this can be seen carbonized in Pompeii. However, it's not unlikely that bread would have been shaped and braided much like bread today, so that's what I'll be doing here. You could form this into a simple round and just bake it as is, but if you're going to braid it, divide your dough into three long sausage shapes, each about the same thickness and length. Join them together at one end by pressing the dough together, and then braid it, like I'm doing, poorly. Now that your loaf is done, go place it onto a lightly floured baking pan. Place a damp cloth or cling film over this loaf and leave it next to a heater or in a very warm area. This is just to let the dough prove and expand. Leave it be for about an hour or until the dough has doubled in size. When it's finished proving, take the cloth off of it and place this into the middle of an oven preheated to 200 degrees Celsius or 395 degrees Fahrenheit for about 25 to 30 minutes or until your loaf develops a very nice golden crust. This may take more or less time than my oven, so be sure to keep an eye on it so it doesn't burn. When it's done, take it out of the oven and let it cool before you cut into it. The finished loaf is delightfully light with a lovely crispness to it. Fine flour in the Roman Empire would still have had a large proportion of wheat bran, so it would have been closer to modern whole grain flour than to modern plain flour. That's why I used half whole grain and half plain, to try and get the balance right. The crumb of this bread is delightfully soft, and when toasted, has a very nutty flavour. Bread was a very important part of ancient Roman society, and indeed other ancient societies, and persists through to the modern day. After all, it's rather hard to imagine what life would be like today without the humble loaf of bread. In any case, I hope you all enjoyed this look at the world that was. If you like what you saw, please consider leaving a like on this video, and possibly even subscribing to my channel for some more ancient recipes.